Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you where I'm kind of talking about something a little theoretical, but a big change that I'm seeing in the industry as AI is really democratizing the ability to manipulate data. Um, and that is the concept of the data citizen data engineer. Um, and this is kind of an evolution of the term of the citizen data scientists uh, and refers to users that are not formally trained as data engineers, but are empowered with tools, practices, and in this day as well, chatbots, AI, LLMs, to help them build and maintain their own data pipelines, transformations, and integrations to support their own job function. <laughs> and this is really to, to understand the emergence of the citizen data engineer. It's really important to kind of first explore the shift left movement in data engineering, which has really reshaped roles, responsibilities, and the architecture of the modern data systems. So that's what we're gonna get into today, talking about how citizen data engineers have risen up as a result of the shift left movement. So give you a great understanding of what both of those terms mean and an idea of you know, some trends that are really shaping uh, the data engineering industry in today. So without further ado, let's get into it, starting with the shift left movement. So the concept of shift left really originated in software development, which coincidentally is where data engineering gets a lot of its practices. Uh, but particularly it arose in the concept of DevOps and testing where it referred to moving you know, things like testing and security penetration testing earlier, which is leftward in the development cycle. So when we're talking about shifting left, we're talking about shifting those types of tasks earlier in the development cycle. Um, and in data engineering, what this refers to is responsibilities that were once solely owned by specialized teams, you know, specialized data teams that were responsible for building these pipelines now those jobs are being pushed closer to the domain experts and analysts. So, you know, if you're a business analyst in charge of analyzing, you know, let's say healthcare data, it now is on you to actually build the pipelines to, and collect that healthcare data yourself rather than relying on a central data engineering team to do so. Um, and to give you some kind of historical context of why this has happened is data engineering in you know, the early days, pre 2010s was very much an IT centric discipline. Uh, it was really focused on building and maintaining ETL pipelines for batch processing. Uh, and really data warehouses were the purview of a small set of specialists, right? You had a very small data team that would manage all access to that data warehouse and any data request would typically flow through the centralized BI or IT teams. And then over you know, the kind of past decade, the 2020 or 2010s, you had tools like Snowflake, DBT, Fivetran and Airflow emerge. And those really helped to simplify data warehousing and orchestration where you didn't need to be a highly trained specialist to be able to use those. Um, and with these tools, analysts could directly define and manage their own transformations. Um, and really the line between engineering and analysis started to blur because you know, there wasn't so much of a distinction between, hey, pulling data and then manipulating it. You know, where do you say when the data engineer stops and the data analyst begins? Um, and then in the past five years, I would say, you really see in the shift left evolution of that, right? Where companies are more and more embracing self-service analytics, where you have roles like the analytics engineer, where you know an analytics engineer is basically an embedded data engineer within the analytics team in charge of building pipelines specifically for data analytics. Um, and it's blending software engineering best practices with data modeling, so inheriting some of the things that you know came out in the in, in DevOps a decade before, making their way into data engineering, um, and also this arose with tools like DBT Cloud, Datafold, Monte Carlo, uh, Soda, which made it a lot easier to manage and test data pipelines without needing really deep coding expertise. Um, and then this revolution has really enter, ro, ri, has resulted in the citizen data engineer, right? So as automation and abstraction increase, you know, now you can build a data pipeline with a couple lines of, a couple sentences in ChatGPT, it's a lot more feasible for domain experts, the business analysts, the operations leads, the marketing managers to build and manage their respective parts of the pipeline. Um, and that has given rise to the citizen data engineer. So now we have citizen data engineers, which have really become quite a growing need within the ecosystem. <laughs> and really what you're seeing, you know, as a who is a citizen data engineer, kind of what defines a citizen data engineer, it is a non-traditional, often non-technical contributor who has been empowered to design, build, or maintain data pipelines using low-code, no-code tools, or simplified frameworks that a company has built. Think YAML configuration files, filling out a form to produce another pipeline, things like that. 
Um, and while they don't replace professional data engineers, they complement them by reducing bottlenecks, handling domain-specific data transformations, and enabling faster time to insight. Um, you know, and this role is really characterized by domain expertise and a deep understanding of the business processes, KPIs, and goals associated with the data pipeline they're trying to produce. Rather than needing to, you know, explain to a data engineer who might not have an understanding of what your line of business is actually doing, hey, I need to get data in this way for this reason, there's often a kind of loss in translation element, right? You know, they don't know exactly what you need. You don't know exactly how to, how to you know, tell them what to get. And so there's just a slower iteration cycle where, you know, it's constantly, hey, this isn't quite right. I actually need to adjust it to this, so on and so forth. Whereas with a citizen data engineer, you know, you have that understanding of the business processes and what kind of data you actually need to get out of your data pipeline. And by being able to build it yourself, there's no kind of, hey, circle of, you know, feedback loop of, hey, I need to you know, run this by my data engineer, see if it's right. You're doing it all yourself now. It's very much, hey, I can iterate much faster by acting as an independent entity rather than relying on a data engineer from a central team. Um, and another thing that this role is characterized is, you know, tooling proficiency, right? And, and kind of the light concept of light data engineering. So, you know, the familiarity to use tools like DBT, Airbyte, um, or, you know, having frameworks like DAG Factory to build Airflow DAGs. Um, and, you know, maybe you don't have a super in-depth understanding of what, you know, how it's working under the hood, but learning basic SQL or, you know, learning how to use an integration platform like Airbyte or fill out a YAML file isn't the most complex thing and is relatively easy for non-technical users to do. Um, you also have you know, some light engineering you'll need to do. So obviously being able to work with SQL, YAML, or visual data interfaces to define data flows is important as well. And again, you, know, you just need to have that light understanding of, hey, how do I write a simple SQL statement? And honestly, in this day and age, you don't need to know how to write it yourself from scratch. You can rely on ChatGPT, other services to actually write that code for you. You just need to audit that, hey, this is giving me the result I want. And then tell that AI to fix the code it generated or you know, change up something in that low code platform. It's really about you know, having enough skill that you're able to iterate and tweak existing tools to get the outcome that you're looking for. Another thing that's key here is also you know, having a very collaborative workflow style. You know, working in partnership with your centralized data teams, leveraging data governance frameworks, CICD pipelines, existing templates. That's typically something you're gonna use in this. It's going to be, you know, hey, having templates that you can use that you don't necessarily need to build everything from scratch, but you can tweak that template to be able to get there again, the result you want for your specific business unit. Um, so those are kind of, you know, some typical characteristics you'll see of a citizen data engineer. So with the rise of the citizen data engineer, there are a few major benefits that I wanna talk about and why you, know, you might wanna consider becoming a citizen data engineer. Number one is much faster iteration. If you've ever had to deal with an overburdened data team, you know it can take a lot of time to get your requests actually done. I mean, I have, even have some experience in my own company. You know, hey, if I wanna get something from our data team, that's not a, hey, right now problem, that's, you know, maybe they'll get to it in a month or two problem, right? And if I need that data right now, I gotta build it myself. Um, it also really helps you increase your data literacy. You know, by becoming a stakeholder in the health and the quality of your data, you're gonna gradually learn more about the data you're gonna use. You're gonna understand, you know, the more com underlying complexities of your data, how it's managed, how it's used, and thus be able to get more out of your data. Um, additionally, scalability. By allowing your central data team to really just focus on infrastructure and governance and building solid rails for business units to build on top of, it allows much faster iteration from that central data team, much faster iteration of those actual core processes because citizen or central data teams don't need to worry about building the last line pipelines. They just are building the tooling. Um, and that's really what they're best at, right? They're not always gonna be the best at figuring out how to get the right data for your specific use case. You focus on that. Data engineers, central data team focuses on building a really good platform for you to use to get that data from. However, with all these benefits, there are some challenges for sure. Um, you know, governance and security being a big one, right? Citizen-led pipelines, if you're just giving everyone open access to access your data, 
So there's a lot of risk there. There's a lot of you know controls that you'll you're going to want to implement on what data each person can access to reduce risk and then also reduce redundancy. You know you don't want to have one person building a pipeline or in every team that might just you know one person can build and share across the entire team or across many different teams, right? And so that's where having that central data team that's able to build those templates is really effective because you know they can be shared by everyone in the organization. Um, and also technical debt. You know, if you're really bad written or unmonitored logic, that's going to degrade your pipeline quality and the quality of your data over time. So while it's great that you know you can iterate fast, it's also important to have controls on the quality of those data pipelines to make sure that you're adhering to organizational standards and you don't end up in a data swamp. Um, and it also does require some training. You know, your organization is going to invest in some data literacy and platform onboarding. So there is a scale. You know, you're not going to just going to be able to become a citizen data engineer one day. Uh, and one day, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some training, and that's going to require either you doing it yourself or your company helping to support you. With obviously your company supporting you being the much better option here, um, because it does have a lot of benefit to the company as well. Um, and then, you know, just kind of looking more future state. As tools are really, you know, becoming more AI-assisted, declarative, citizen data engineering is only going to expand, right? You know, now it's you don't need to have a really good understanding of how to write code yourself. You can use Chatbot. You can use AI to do that. And companies that are in starting to invest in those more data mesh and domain-oriented ownership of data, where each team owns their own data and data is treated as a product. And in this model, citizen data engineers really play a key role in managing data products within their own domain. So. That is, you know, really all I want to talk about today. You know, just to in conclusion, really seeing the citizen data engineer as a byproduct of the modern data stacks evolution and the broader shift left movement, and by empowering these different domain experts across the business with simplified data teams or simplified tools, stronger governance, organizations can really help accelerate their data uh, innovation. They can reduce bottlenecks. You don't have to have an overloaded central team and build a more resilient and distributed data culture. Um, so while they're not a replacement for traditional data engineers, and some people get that wrong, you know, they, they really aren't, citizen data engineers do represent a crucial shift towards truly democratized and scalable data systems across an organization. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.